I'm trying to figure out how to do this video without sounding like too much of a fangirl, but that might not be possible. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Catching Tease here. Welcome to my channel where today I am finally doing a video where I get to gush about ATs, specifically Hala Hala here. Can you tell that I am excited? So I wanted to talk about Hala Hala in particular because of the massive impact it had on ATs' trajectory as a group and the industry as a whole. It's arguably one of their most iconic songs to date, considering it is still a fan favorite at concerts, and even people who aren't fans of ATs know about how crazy this thing is. Usually groups looking to cover songs from other groups shy away from ATs' songs in general, but Hala Hala they sprint away from, and understandably so. When looking at Hala Hala, none of it should have worked. None of it. But this song and this performance have sent so many ripples through the industry that I felt it would be a crime to not talk about it. So let's get into the brilliance of Hala Hala and how it somehow beat all of the odds. I'm just starting with the obvious thing working against Hala Hala here. It's not a title track. You might think it is, and it might be better than like half of the title tracks out there in my personal opinion, but no, it's a B-side. So why is this thing so popular if it's not even the title track? Well, it's because they did a good job of promoting it alongside the title track. And the title track was fire, so people were excited to see more from them. And this promotion, it wasn't like a half-assed attempt either. It wasn't just doing some shortened performance to tack on during music shows. No, they gave Hala Hala its own little shortened performance video to drop alongside the title track and then performed the full thing at music shows. And when they saw how much buzz it was getting, especially after San's fan cam went viral, then they put together a full music video performance version to release not even a month later. It got over 450k views in one day, which is not even 150k behind the title, and pretty darn good for a multi-week old B-side of a rookie boy group that hadn't even existed for more than a handful of months. This performance video currently sits close to 42 million views, which is pretty close to the performance video of their debut title track, which currently sits at 43 million views. For some perspective, that puts Hala Hala ahead of the performance videos for Twice's Ooh Ah, BTS's Boy in Love, Seventeen's Don't Wanna Cry, TXT's Crown, Stray Kids' Victory Song, and many, many, many more. Hi, so editing Catching Tease here. I just discovered there's actually another version of the performance video posted to Stone Music Entertainment's channel, and that one has well over 12 million views. So technically, that puts Hala Hala over 54 million, which is insane. So new perspective, that's not too far behind NCT's Black on Black performance video. You know, one of NCT's most iconic performances ever. Yeah, I'm having a proud ATN moment here because this ragtag group of eight from a tiny company is up there with one of the biggest boy groups in the world. Anyways, moving on. This might seem weird for me to be mentioning now, but I think Hala Hala's anti-drop is a huge part of its success because of how it adds to the shock factor of the whole thing. Keep in mind that this was at the very beginning of 2019. Anti-drops had hardly hit the scene in any music industry, let alone K-pop. Charlie Puth's Attention, the song that's largely credited with popularizing the anti-drop, came out in May of 2018. So that's only an eight-month difference. The only moderately popular anti-drop that I can think of in K-pop before 2019 is Newest W's Deja Vu. Point is, anti-drops were not common, and they certainly weren't as abrupt and meaningful as Hala Hala's. The one in Newest W's Deja Vu is meant to be a sultry and sexy and almost emotional twist. With the way that Hala Hala's pre-chorus just builds and builds and builds, builds and the chorus suddenly drops out from under your feet, it's designed for one purpose only, rock your world. 
the song flips on its head in just about every way imaginable. The instrumentals go from sharp percussion and sweeping synths all rising and building to almost no percussion and this strange lurching and warpy bass line behind a plonky melody that sounds like it popped out of a dystopian movie soundtrack. The vocal melody goes from these elegant and extended backing vocals that support lines in a middle range and reach towards something more to cutting it all out and leaving only Hong Joon's low nasal drone to fill all of the emptiness. I also want to point out how the lyrics and the tone differ between the pre-chorus and the chorus. The pre-chorus sounds so full of hope and ambition and it just seems so positive. It's like the bright-eyed protagonist of some epic story in the way that it describes their passion. Deep in my heart, deep in my soul, a flashing light that has been rekindled. Fire like an undying flame, a little hotter so that you can't stop. I think it's gonna burst. The chorus, on the other hand, has an entirely different vibe. It's prowling and cynical and sinister in the way that it describes passion in this terrifying, all-consuming, and destructive way. Surprise! A round of applause, everyone. A real-life suicide squad. Frightening. Let's get burning now. Whenever I hear Hala Hala's chorus, I always think of this Hong Joong. In my head, this Hong Joong is the personification of Hala Hala's chorus, just because of how ominous and threatening he looks. But back to the point, all of this put together, the anti-drop, the flip stylistically, the flip lyrically, it creates this beautifully terrifying picture that subverts expectations in just about every way possible in a few seconds. And that's just the song, so now we can start getting to everything else. Yes, I'm calling this choreography violent, because people always call choreography intense, but this goes beyond that. I mean, they literally snap their necks at the end, and it's not like the cute snap from Itzy's Icy. No, like, I legitimately worry that San is going to snap his own neck one of these days if he's not careful, so... I don't know what other adjective to use to describe this choreography. Look no further than all of the mics broken during this era. Rest in peace. Moment of silence. Not all of it is violent, though, so let's go through this bit by bit. It mirrors the song in the way that it starts out relatively smooth with just a few abrupt jerks to emphasize the intensity. However, when the pre-chorus hits, it takes a turn. Now everything is twitchy and jerks around and sharp moves. We get clawed hands and shuddering, trembling forms as AT struggles to contain their passion until something snaps and we hit the chorus. Now the first part of the chorus makes me think of a puppet getting their strings cut. Not in terms of the choreography itself, but in terms of the type of energy being given. Everything smooths out and opens up for the most part. Usually I wouldn't call this smooth, but when compared to what was happening before, yeah, it's a lot smoother, just with moments of the jerkiness from before. The movements are a lot larger, and they take up more space compared to the cramped and crouched postures from before. I love this part here in particular just because of how fluid and chaotic yet controlled it feels. You see them all moving differently, but ultimately slinking together as this single, undulating entity that's stalking their prey with Hong Joong at the helm. Now, I'm just going to skip ahead to the dance break because the dance break is just straight up possession. Like, there's no other way to put it. ATs hits a breaking point where they combine the jerky thrashing of the verses with the larger movements and open postures of the chorus. ATs tears at their clothing like they're in straight jackets while their heads bang around. Flying limbs and rolling eyes take center stage as everything comes together in this insane moment of madness that closes out the song. A lot of shifts happen throughout the song, but the entire thing is wild all the way through. Any group doing choreography like this in 2019 was ballsy, but a rookie group doing this? Even more so, I have mad respect for them even attempting something like this. Right 
But do you want to know what I have mad, mad respect for? The way that they performed this song, because they did it all out and with no shame whatsoever. And I genuinely love them so much for that. I hold a firm belief that ATs changed the trajectory of stage presence in K-pop with this song, and I am about to get into a whole spiel on why. We're all familiar with the foundation of K-pop, right? Visuals and looking attractive and how everyone is either supposed to be sexy or cool or pretty, and those are pretty much the three things that you're allowed to be. Yeah, ATs wasn't having any of that. Because the way that they perform Holla Holla is downright terrifying. They aren't trying to be sexy or cool or pretty. No, they spat on that perfectly manufactured base of K-pop and went, this is our raw passion. We're leaving it all on stage. And if that weirds you out, that is your problem, not ours. There's a reason the whole Demon San thing started around this time and it still lives on today. I mean, look at this and tell me that they're trying to be attractive. No, they're scary. Look into those eyes and tell me that you aren't scared. Some of the freakier stands might be like, mark me down as scared and horny, but scared is still a part of it. It's not conventionally attractive. And that's why I think they pioneered the idea of raw, unattractive performances being attractive. Even though very, very few groups have actually had the intensity to pull off this kind of performance, I've seen more attempting it in the past couple of years. While companies will still try and push them to make it like sexy or cool, a lot of boy groups are slowly crawling their way to something like Hala Hala. The closest I've seen that's coming to mind right now is N-Hyphen's Drunk Dazed. It has the same twitchiness to the choreography and uncanny vibe to the performance. To be honest, I don't think anything will top Hala Hala on the creepy performance front, but I'm glad that the industry is slowly accepting other types of performances. Could I have called this section styling? Yes, but honestly, I feel like costuming is a more accurate term because their outfits look and feel like they popped out of a stylish Halloween catalog. Anyway, this is probably my favorite section. I could wax poetic about the genius decisions made by the styling team here, but I will try to keep it to a minimum. So, again, we all know K-pop is a very superficial industry. Everyone wants to focus on the glitter and the glamour, and most importantly, the pretty faces in front of the camera. Usually, the first thing that rookies want to do is show their gorgeous faces because the industry runs on visuals. So, what happens when you take all the visuals away? What happens when you dress a group of rookies in black cloaks with fedoras and masks that make them near indistinguishable from one another. People literally had no choice but to focus only on their talent, and ATs was dripping with it, and they knew it. It was ballsy as hell because this could have gone so horribly wrong. If they hadn't had the skill and the confidence to pull this off, it would have just looked like some sloppy, half-assed gimmick. But because they went all in on the concept, the costuming just made sense and honestly tied the whole thing together. Cloaked in shadowy black and muzzled in masks and draped in chains, the costumes combined with the choreography and the performance and the lyrics, it just builds that massive unease that is the basis for the entire concept and the reason for the notoriety that it garnered. They were turning heads because not only was the entire thing genius, but people were marveling at the fact that they had only been in the game for three months. And they were that groundbreaking already. So that's my analysis of Hala Hala and what makes it so iconic. Holistically, I think that this is one of their strongest releases to date, even though it is a B-side. It's amazing to me how well everything fits together and how nothing feels out of place. And to this day, I am still stunned at the fact that they were like baby faced rookies when this came out. I just I can't get over it clearly by how many times I repeated that fact in this video. But uh, it's it's just so good. I love it so much. 
But that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below. What do you think about Hala Hala? Is there anything that I said that you really agree or disagree with? Would you add anything to this video or do you just want to scream about ATs together? Because I will gladly do so. Gladly. If you liked the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. Thanks again for watching and I will talk to you all next time. Bye! Yeah.